yeah okay and welcome back hello here are um, again some peculiar aspects of value added tax some special cases where the expert exemption is limited or not granted and some additional remarks and that is then our last part for experts so let's have a look Certain exemptions exist in German law and also in the EU directive. Exemption number one is not tax-free is the exportation of goods which are meant for the equipment of vehicles. Um, if it is the customer who carries the good abroad and this customer is not a business customer. Now, this is mostly fuel or gasoline, however you call it. And the reason is very, very simple, because if you want to understand a legal rule, the good trick is always imagine what would happen otherwise. So what would happen otherwise if the exportation of fuel or gasoline by a private customer in a car, for example, would be possible? Then, ladies and gentlemen, all owners of private cars will stop at the border to the third country and try to declare the remaining contents of their tanks as an export of a good. They would probably present um, the bills or confirmations of their tanking sta stations where they tanked the fuel and then they would uh, declare the fuel for exportation. Now, the customs officials would have to check if the fuel is still there when the border is crossed. So, a bit of the fuel will have been used before you reach the border, so that will not be exported. So, you would have to measure the contents of the tank. Now, that would be a problem combined with that, because if the tank was not completely made full, then it probably contained the rest of a former um, amount of fuel so the question would be which amount has been first used the old fuel the new fuel and so on so you would have hours of debate for a single car when it crosses the border and just to um, grant an exemption a tax exemption which would make life of all people involved complicated <clears throat> And if it's not a business customer, that makes no sense. If it is a business customer, that would be different. For example, if somebody comes and buys fuel in Germany and this is a bus or this is a lorry, um, that would be extremely different because a lorry would always get the input tax refund. So we would grant it here too. And it would not pose these practical problems that we would have to find out which part of the fuel has been already used up when the border is reached and all of that stuff. So <clears throat> the simple background behind this first exemption is simply that without this exemption from the or exemption from the exemption, the queues on the border would be enormous. Probably people on the Swiss German border would queue up until um, the beginning of Norway, Norway. So keep in mind this exemption, exception, not exemption, or exemption from the exemption, only applies if the customer is a private customer and carries the good in question abroad. So in cases of 6 1 number 2. USDG and not six foot number one. The second exception uh, from the exemption is the goods which are exported as part of your personal travel baggage are only exempted under very restrictive conditions if you are a private customer. The first restriction is the customer in question must be a resident of a third country or a third territory and the good must be exported within the three next calendar months after their purchase. 
um, why again you with a little imagination you can find out the reasons travel baggage can usually be carried across the border into the country where you go to um, free of importation tax so at least up to certain limits so if you grant um, an exportation exemption for goods which are carried by the customer over the border in travel package um, then they would leave the country tax-free they would probably enter let's say switzerland also tax-free and when later the, the customer brings them back from switzerland across the border again to germany they would probably also enter the country completely tax-free so that would be a possibility um, to create absolutely tax-free consume for example um, <clears throat> Let's say a French customer would go to Germany, buy German goods there, carries them to Switzerland, then enters France again. That would be tax-free consume made possible in the EU. Um, German customers would shop in France, uh, leave France via Switzerland, go from Switzerland to Germany, bring goods tax-free into Germany. That is not wanted. So the um, export exemption for goods which are exported in the personal travel baggage is for this reason only granted for people living outside the EU territory. The next idea is um, why is such an export for personal travel baggage only granted for so country citizens who um, carry or export these goods within three months the answer is well if let's say you grant this exemption still after let's say two years then the good has been used here in the meantime so the place of consumption so the place of destination is the eu the inland and not the third country so an exemption only makes sense in cases where consume did not happen and now you have to estimate which cases can that be where the customer doesn't use these goods and there is a very simple idea the period of three months seems to be based on the fact that the longest stay which someone from abroad can have here as a mere tourist is usually 90 days so if somebody buys something and stays then within the EU for more than 90 days, then that person lives here. And so we can assume that in the meantime, these goods have been used at least for the first time or several times in the EU. Yeah. Again here, this exemption from the exemption or only applies if the customer is a private customer and carries the good in question abroad himself so in cases of six one number two not if the entrepreneur sends the good abroad himself um, six one number one so you can design your circumstances individually in the right way that you always get the exemption if the other contracting party, the entrepreneur, is willing to play the same game as you and if the costs are not too high. So you can always avoid this variant. Okay. Now another aspect. We talked already about the fact that an expert can only be tax-free if the expectation is proven without any remaining doubts. So that in case where a proof is lacking or is not satisfactory, automatically full tax liability happens. Um, this naturally has also been declared within the text of the USDG Tax Act. 6.4 states explicitly that the exemption for an expert is only granted if the entrepreneur provides the necessary proofs for the exemption. 
Otherwise, everything becomes fully taxable. What are the necessary proofs? That is something which is not completely regulated by EU law. The basic contents of 6.1 number 1 has been fully harmonized in all EU states by the VAT directive. Um, however, when it comes to which proofs does a fiscal administration regard as necessary and sufficient, um, there the EU directive says that each member state can determine in detail how the taxpayers have to give proof to the fiscal administration. This is an enormous pitfall because um, you have the same rules everywhere but different proofs and documents to make the proofs safe um, can be demanded by different countries. That makes sense as long as the let's say the customs <laughs> or the traditions how tax fraud is committed are still different in different countries. So it's necessarily adequate. But um, if the necessary proofs are how now different in different member states, it could happen theoretically at least that you present documents which would be sufficient as a definitive proof in member state A but are rejected by member state B because some documents demanded by them are missing. Um, so one should always inform oneself about the potentially different rules for an exportation. You need to know that you have to prove the tax-free exportation to the country where your transaction is taxable. So where under 3.6 sentence 1 the delivery happened, where the place of delivery is. So if you are a German enterprise, for example, but you delivered a good from a place in Belgium onwards to, let's say, a customer in Beijing in China, then at least in theory you would have to present the proofs for your tax exemption to the Belgian, Belgian fiscal authorities because there your transaction was taxable. Um, so knowing about the right proofs can be vital. Usually that is not a, um, a very dangerous point in practice because usually when you deal with experts or so you will um, use the services of an haulier or something else, a forwarding agent, specialists which are used to um, do all the declaration stuff in a necessary way and they will also know about these uh, differences and pitfalls and requirements. You should however never be absolutely naive in practice when it comes to expectation proofs. Well, you can't say for me the matter is clear so it must also be clear for the fiscal administration. That would be a very dangerous idea. Uh, in Germany, the uh, fiscal ministry has laid down the requirements for what is a sufficient documentation of an expert in the uh, VAT implementation regulation. In German, it's called the Umsatzsteuerdurchführungsordnung, or USTDV. The requirements here are legally binding because a regulation under the German law has the same effect like a law, but is um, not a law, but just a rule issued by the federal government on the grounds of a formal permission by German parliament. So a regulation is in German law principally the same as a law, only based on the permission in a law, the permission given by the federal parliament, the Bundestag and Bundesrat. Well, according to that, VAT implementation regulation, the USCDV, the necessary proofs under German law are some general requirements. For example, that an exportation must be proven by documents. So um, I always had the idea, well, how else could it be proven? Um, isn't it ridiculous to demand a proof by documents? And it is not you would always think naturally it can only be documents but the important thing in this legal text is not what is written here but what is missing here the text does not speak of 
be proved by witnesses. So what is never allowed is to bring forward witnesses which then swear in court um, under oaths that they saw that you carried the good over the border. That would not be sufficient. You must bring forward document proofs. So even if you say I can bring the Pope as my witness or somebody else who is honest, he has never been uh, in doubt. The judge would simply say, we don't have to call in that witness because a witness is not allowed as a measure of proof. So documentary proofs are necessary. And the proof must be given in a way that it can be checked easily and um, no doubts remain. So it must be clear and easy. And then, in addition to these general conditions, you have specific requirements, namely there is a list of potential constellations. For example, if um, one of the two parties involved brings the good over the border himself, then you have a list of uh, required documentation which has to be presented. Um, if you make usage of Holia or of mail services, DHL or other firms, then there is also a complete list of documents which must be handed in, which must be present and so on. So here you would have to learn if you work for a Holia or a similar specialist, which has to do very often with exportation cases. You would have to learn by heart probably which case constellation requires which necessary minimum documentation. Furthermore, you also have to show in your books of your enterprise um, a certain amount of necessary information. That's paragraph 13 of the USTDV. So when it comes to dealing with these things in practice, you um, need some detailed knowledge. In exams, naturally, usually the assumption is all the necessary documentation is available or present. So um, in an exam, usually all the facts which are presented in the task are regarded as given. That's everywhere in juridical exams. So you don't have to bother about that. But in practice, this is one of the most important points to have the necessary proofs for what has happened. Okay, let's just sum up the legal sources. Experts are regulated in German law at paragraph 6 USDG. In the EU directive, by the way, that um, remains to be said, relevant tax exemptions can be found in the articles 146 to 148. So it might be a good idea um, to take that EU directive, it's 2006 slash 112 slash EC. You can find it on the internet and there have a look to the articles 146 to 148 there you get the basic information on how experts are treated in all countries in the EU um, just to say it at the end probably nearly all the basics are identical and even these exemptions or exceptions from the exemptions which are mentioned for private customers exist in all member states of the EU. Thanks for watching this time and hope to see you soon again for the next video in this series. Goodbye and welcome again soon.